and my oh yes coming through good morning good morning oh it's a bleak day today my goodness it was depressing opening those curtains and thank you for coming to morning worship here in Bonnie Dyke Parish Church a really warm welcome it's not super warm I don't know if your debate has started in your house about who gets to put the heating on and no not doing it till October but beginning to feel a nip in the air. So not the warmest of environments, but the warmest of welcome to all of you gathered here. And we remember those gathering online. We pray that you know that warmness of God's spirit with you as you join us in worship. So there's some notices that will have been going on the screen. If you need to access them, um, you can find them online or on Facebook. Um, last week, we launched our new youth group that was meeting with high school pupils. Um, that's paused this week because Josh is with Lorna's churches and um, sharing with them. So that'll kick off again next week. Um, but there is YF tonight. So for those young people, um, YF is on again this evening. Um, I don't think there's any more. I've not been given any notes of any. Diane, there's no notices I need to give. <laughs> and you've waved at me furiously last week, having forgotten them. Um, so the usual going on in the church, and um, it's always great. We love meeting together on a Sunday, but we also love all the activities that go on during the week, and we encourage you to get involved with them. Now, I did hear a rumour there was a little bird. I love it when little birds come and give me pieces of information about the family. And a little bird told me that somebody's turning 10 on Wednesday. Anybody at the back turning 10 on Wednesday? Anybody at the front turning 10? Come on out, Cooper. Oh, double digits. It's a big deal. Are you doing anything nice for your birthday? He's going to a place called Clown Around. No, not to Clown Around. It's called Time Twisters. Time Twisters. Time Twisters. Oh, is that got like slides and I imagine twisting yeah. involved in that somehow with my detective skills. Brilliant. Have a great time on Wednesday. Please light our candle for us this morning. Push down hard, that's it. Ah, brilliant. Big cheer for Cooper. <laughs> Enjoy your birthday on Wednesday, Cooper. Double digits is going to be great. I um, was given a book by a friend of mine with different resources, and uh, I read this beautiful call to worship that I wanted to share with us this morning. Relax your body. Open your mind. Engage your spirit. This is the house of God. Prepare to worship. Life is an incredible gift. Our worship is a celebration of that gift and of the giver. In our worship, we rediscover God's marvelous affirmation of life. Let's join our voices together as we sing our opening hymn, There is a Redeemer.
as we've joined our voices in song, let's join our hearts in prayer as we give thanks for the offering so faithfully given. And also we'll pray the Lord's Prayer together, which will be on the screen if you need it. Let's pray. Father, we gather here to worship you. We gather here to thank you for the gift of Jesus. Today, we bring to you our joys and our fears, our struggles and our achievements. We bring all of ourselves to you, knowing that you are that loving Father who knows our name, who knows every bit of us and who loves us with a love so fierce it conquered death itself. Jesus, thank you that as we gather here this morning, we gather as a family, celebrating with one another, sharing sorrows with one another. We thank you that in this place, we can be completely ourselves, knowing we're loved and treasured. And so as we bring you ourselves, we bring you to our offerings, left in an envelope at the door, transmitted mystically online, all set apart for the purpose of God, all set apart for the kingdom's work. We pray you would use everything that we give for your glory. And so, as we gather, as your family here, together we pray the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples when he said, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever. Amen. Okay, DJ Club, there's lots of you scattered all over the place. Um, do you remember who was with me last week at the children's talk? Do you remember who I had? Does anyone remember? Begins with, oh, Johnny, do you remember? It begins with the same letter as your name. What, do you remember who it was? Have you forgot his name? It's easy done. I forget names all the time, but don't tell anybody. Uh, it was Jason. Who remembers Jason? Ah, I know, you know, I'm like, yeah. So um, Jason last week had had a really rough week. There'd been all these things that he'd got wrong and he was getting himself in a right old state about it. Um, but that was all last week. That was all the week before. It would dealt with all that. But he had another rotten week. In fact, his week was so rotten, he's not even here today. I said he couldn't come. Because we have been arguing all week. Do you ever get weeks where you just argue all the time? I'm sure none of the DJ club ever argue with any of their siblings. I'm sure none of you argue with any of your pals. And I'm sure none of the adults or the grown-ups ever argue with their husbands or wives or grannies or not. No, I bet everybody here never argues. Which is why Jason couldn't come. Because me and him have been arguing all week. But the thing is, I know I'm right. <laughs> it's true. I am 100% right. So I told him, don't even bother coming. And I want to prove that I'm completely right. For instance, we had an argument because he said that McDonald's was better than KFC. What do you think? Maisie, do you think McDonald's is better than KFC? Oh, now, okay, so we're going to have to take a poll. Who thinks I'm right? KFC is better. Uh -huh, thank you very much. You can stay. Who thinks Jason is right? Who thinks McDonald's better than? Oh, no. Right, so maybe you can help me out. We had another argument this week. 
Now, you all know that there's something I care very deeply and passionately about. Crisps. <laughs> you all knew it. I could hear you. Um, and me and Jason had a big fallout over what crisps we were going to buy. I said salt and vinegar McCoys because they are like the best crisps. Do you know what he said? Quavers. Quavers. I mean, you can't even get a crunch out of quaver. So, who thinks I'm right? Who agrees that Macaulay's salt and vinegar are far superior to quavers? Thank you, thank you. Who thinks Jason's right with quavers? <laughs> Moira loves a quaver. <laughs> oh, we're going to have to have words, Moira. This is, I'm, I'm getting a bit upset about this. So, we had another heated discussion. We were wanting to watch a DVD. He'd come round to hang out at the manse. And I wanted to watch The Avengers, because The Avengers Assemble, I just love it, when all the superheroes get together. And he wanted to watch and said, a far better film is Spider-Man. So who thinks I'm right in that debate and The Avengers Assemble is the best? Okay, thank you. Who thinks Spider-Man's better and that Jason won that argument? Ah, oh, Cooper, you think Spider-Man's better? Oh. So, last, the last argument that we had that, was, that tipped me over the edge and resulted in storming out, and he's not allowed in church, was we're having a drink of juice. And I says, let's have some orange juice because that's delicious and has vitamin C. And Jason says, orange juice is not the best juice. He said, tomato juice. Now, I think you will all agree, I am 100% right on this debate. You can't possibly have tomato soup, it's um, tomato juice, because it's like soup. It's just all wrong. So, hands up if you think I'm right, orange juice is by far the best. Thank you. At last, anybody going to put their hands up and admit to like, oh, yeah, a few, yeah, quite good. But is that with vodka and Worcester sauce? <laughs> and quavers. Ah, jings. In life, every day we have discussions where we say, no, no, I'm right on this one. And they'll say, oh, no, I'm right. And the reality is, in the debate over what's the best flavor of crisps, who's right? Me or Jason? We're both right. It's just our opinions. Just because I think a way doesn't necessarily mean that's the only flavour of crisps that's good. People have lots of different tastes and people like lots of different things. And that's what makes people so interesting. That's what makes friendships so exciting because we have different ideas about things and we like different things and we enjoy different things. But it's really important that we don't use these things as a reason to fall out and say, ah, oh, they don't know anything. They don't even like salt and vinegar crisps. But we say, oh, that's so interesting. You like quavers. That's really cool. I like a different kind. These differences are really, really important and make us unique. But sometimes in life, these differences can be a reason to fall out like me and Jason did. And I think all the DJ club will know full well that Jason and I shouldn't be arguing over things thinking we're right, but we should be friends in the midst of our differences. And today's story is about a fallout. Those in the DJ club will be looking at it over at the Pitcairn Centre. We're going to be looking at the story here in church. And we see in the Bible, people fell out. But Jesus showed us a different way, and he said this really powerful thing about how we have to live together, to bear with one another, to live a life of love. Even in all our differences, we can still get along, and we might fight sometimes, but we can always make up and really celebrate the differences rather than making it fall out. Now, we're going to sing a song together, which I know lots of the DJ club enjoy, and it's This Is Amazing Grace.
eat. DJ Club, we've loved having you guys in with us. You're going to go over the road as you continue in, our worship, in your worship, and we'll continue in our worship in here. comes from Acts chapter 15, beginning at verse 36. Sometime later, Paul said to Barnabas, let's go back and visit the believers in the towns where we preach the word of the Lord and see how they're doing. Barnabas wanted to take John, also called Mark, with them, but Paul did not think it wise to take him because he had deserted them in Pamphylia and had not continued with them in the work. They had such a sharp disagreement that they parted company. Barnabas took Mark and sailed for Cyprus, but Paul chose Silas and left commended by the believers to the grace of the Lord. He went through Syria and Cilicia, strengthening the churches. Amen. Thank you, May, for that reading. Um, for those that have been around, you'll know that we are looking through the story of Acts and thank you for reading our next passage from Acts. Let's now join our voices once again as we sing together, Let There Be Love Shared Among Us. So we're rattling through Acts at pace. We started with the amazing conversion story where Song dramatically turned his life around and started following Jesus. Then we went on to think about that new church that was forming, Christians being called Christians for the very first time and what it meant to be part of following Jesus the way. And then we were thinking about how that movement was growing and spreading, but came with a huge cost as we thought of the persecution attached to following Jesus and how many today still are persecuted around the world because of their faith. In the midst of all the miracles and all the wonders, this dynamic duo, Barnabas and Paul, creating all kinds of amazing events. Wherever they went, amazing things happened. And today, as we consider that partnership, finally, there's something I can relate to, falling out. They have a huge fallout. Our passage from Acts, part of that sacred scriptures, which we see poetry and insight and prophecies and all these wonderful things, and yet, in the midst of all that sacred mystery, 
weaved through it all is the reality of the very, very ordinary people who they're speaking about. The start of this chapter speaks of the powerful partnership sorting out a dispute. Back in Jerusalem, they had been having, they had heard that some new preachers had come to Antioch. This new church that's forming had some new teachers in town, and they were preaching that people still needed to follow Moses' law and be circumcised. Now, Barnabas and Paul knew that this wasn't the case, and so they said, we need to go back to headquarters. We're back to Jerusalem, where the council's meeting, because we need to make sure that we are all really crystal clear on what we are talking about. So there was this huge dispute, and it was Paul and Barnabas that went to sort it out. In that beginning of chapter 15, we hear that James speaks to the crowd, that Peter, who is the rock of the church, reminds the council of what Jesus had done. They didn't have the gospels that they could turn to and remind themselves, oh, I remember Jesus said this. They had to encourage one another and remind each other that Jesus had done a completely new thing. One of the verses in Acts 15 talks about how Paul and Barnabas shared stories of what had been happening with the new Christians. And it says, the whole assembly became silent as they listened to Barnabas and Paul telling about the signs and wonders God had done among the Gentiles through them. Everybody stopped talking. They were gripped by these stories that were being told. And all of us know stories have power. When we hear stories of other people, it can be really powerful. It can really inspire us and transform us. We started Alpha last week. It's at St. John's in Kings Park, 7 o'clock on a Thursday night. Last week was just the introduction given us a kind of broad overview of what Alpha is and why you might want to do it. But one of my favorite things about Alpha is that they tell really great stories. There's an opportunity to question and to find out more about the Bible, but there's also opportunities to hear people's stories. The one on Thursday was a story of a scientist who was completely committed to not believing in God, was a total atheist, and knew that the answers to life was found in science. He was at the absolute top of his game, hugely respected in his field. And then he'd been working with this lady who had been suffering an illness, and she'd spoken about how her faith had helped her so much. And she turned and said, what do you believe? And he realized that even though he was a scientist, he hadn't really, really searched the evidence. He hadn't really justified why he believed. He just knew that he didn't believe in God because it could be impossible. So then, systematically, he started to explore all of the facts. And as he investigated, he came to faith. He discovered that there is, in fact, evidence that points directly to Jesus' death and resurrection and it transformed his life, and he's now a person of faith. As we all sat together listening to that story, we were all really encouraged. We were built up. What an amazing story. Look at God at work in his life. Gosh, I've got doubts. I wonder if I should explore things. Stories are powerful. And the place felt silent in Jerusalem because they were listening to the stories that Paul and Barnabas were sharing. I think for us, sharing stories is really important in our faith. When we go through to the pit care and center for a cup of tea after church, we can tell a little bit about our week. But is there any way answers to prayer that we've seen this week? Is there any way we can encourage each other with stories while we share a cuppa? For Paul and Barnabas, sharing their experience greatly encouraged the council in Jerusalem. And so they were then sent back to Antioch with the full approval of the council from Jerusalem, sent back to continue their message of hope in Jesus. But then everything changes. We go from Paul and Barnabas being the source of a dispute, of um, healing and restoring a dispute, 
Now we hear of them in the center of a dispute. They had this brilliant idea. Oh, let's go back visiting all the places that we've seen God do amazing things. Let's go see how everybody's getting on now. But then there is a conflict. They can't decide who to take. Barnabas is really keen to take his cousin, John Mark. Paul is not having any of it. We saw it hinted in our passage. There'd been an argument. Uh, John Mark had done a runner just when they needed them. And Paul was like, no way. He's not coming with us. He did a runner the last time. And so the conflict begins. Wherever there is people, there is conflict. My mum and dad did not have to teach my sister and I how to argue. We figured that out really easily all by ourselves. Conflict is what it means to be human. It's part of life. And today we see our passage document that powerful friendship started so tight. Barnabas was Paul's biggest cheerer on. He was the one that really invited him into the circle of believers when everybody else rejected him. And here we see, even in that powerful friendship, they have a fallout and they just can't make up. We don't know if there was any reconciliation for those two partnerships. There's no evidence to say that there was. But recently, there has been a massive amount of coverage for a dynamic duo, for a partnership that made an impact that was finally reconciled. We see Liam and Noel's cheery faces on the front page of every paper last week. And these brothers from the band Oasis had this huge, infamous, well-documented fallout. And somehow were able to find reconciliation and get back on tour. Oasis is a band that made a huge cultural impact, as well as selling masses of records, absolutely huge amounts of tickets to their gigs. But they were ultimately torn apart because they just couldn't get along. Bands are notorious for fallouts. I read another article that had Oasis as the number one band fallout. Number two, I wonder if anyone can guess what the second one on the list the Beatles, I knew you'd know, Andrew. The Beatles, the third, number three in the list. Famous Fallout, Fleetwood Mac, that was number three. And the list went on and on and on and on of all these brilliant creative folk who just couldn't stay together because of conflict. I remember going to see a band called The Stone Roses. I loved them in my youth and they'd had a big fallout. But then they had a reunion tour and they were playing at Hamden in Glasgow. On June the, uh, 2017, we went to see them. And the lead singer, Ian Brown, said something really obscure at the end. He said, don't be sad, it's over. Be happy that it ever happened. And we were all a bit puzzled about it. But as it turned out, that gig that we were at was their last ever gig that they played together. Because they realized they just couldn't get along. Brown said, don't be sad, it's over. Be happy that it happened. The night of the Stone Roses gig, it felt like Brown was saying something prophetic. At that season in my life, I was going through a really painful conflict. There was a relationship breakdown that was really hard. And somehow Brown spoke directly into it. Don't be sad, it's over. Be happy that it happened. I actually think that was Brown might have said that to Paul and to Barnabas. What your friendship has achieved, what you've done for each other is so transforming and amazing. But maybe it's time to go your different ways. Maybe it's time for you to go different directions. No one can avoid conflict. It's part of how we grow. It's part of how we're shaped. We need to make sure that we protect ourselves against bitterness and anger in that conflict. And just be open to where God is leading us. Cross words were exchanged between Paul and Barnabas. But it didn't get in the way 
of them giving out the gospel. Barnabas went off with John Mark, who Paul later commends in his letters. Paul goes off with Silas, continuing stories in the books of Acts of all the adventures that lay ahead of them. Could it be that both of them were right? That Barnabas, the encourager, needed to spend one-to-one time with John Mark, whose faith was needed, whose faith was weak, and who needed strengthened. Could it be that Paul was also right? He needed to get Silas to raise up in leadership and join him on some pretty scary adventures that Mark wouldn't have been ready for. God has a path for each one of us. Sometimes people come into our life for a reason. Sometimes it's a season. And sometimes it's a lifetime. I wonder this morning if we can give thanks for those people who have entered our life for a reason. There's something to teach us that only they could. As I was thinking about that, the first person that came to my mind was Kieran, my driving instructor. (laughs) Only Kieran could have caught me through my test. He came into my life for a reason. (laughs) I remember I'd gone through a few driving instructors. None of them particularly worked out. And I thought, oh, I wonder maybe if I have a female driver, she'll understand, you know, my kind of emotional side of things. And, you know, maybe that'll be a bit gentler. So I looked out and somebody said, oh, I've got a great number of somebody. So they'd given me this number. Can we go out for a drive? That's fine. And I went in expecting to find this very comforting, nurturing woman. And then there was this big, burly Northern Irishman sitting in the car. Come on in. And I was like, oh, you're not a woman. (laughs) He was like, "Uh (laughs) uh-huh. Completely cross-wired. But Kieran was amazing. He came into my life for a reason. I wonder who springs to your mind. Who's coming to your life for for a particular reason? And I wonder if there's anybody that we can be that person for. We can teach them something. We can show them something. Somebody who maybe needs our approach, our way of thinking to help them out. Can we be a reason in someone's life? I wonder if you can think of someone who's come into your life for a season. Someone who's no longer part of your life. You don't text or get in contact with. But who was part of your life for a season when you needed them. Maybe when you were a new mum and needed some support. Maybe when you started in a new job, you didn't know anybody and you didn't really understand what you were doing. Maybe there's someone there for a season to help guide you through that. And maybe you need to be in someone's life for a season. Is there someone you can think of that think, actually, they've just moved into our street. We're not necessarily going to be best buddies forever, but I wonder if I can help them just guide them to different things. Can we be a friend in season to someone? And then there's your lifelong buddies. Who are the folk who aren't going anywhere? Your pal that you've been with since primary, that's there through thick and thin. Can we give thanks today for those lifelong friends that we have? Maybe drop them a line, send them a text. The story of Paul and Barnabas allows us to consider individual relationships around us. But I think it's also an opportunity to think about communities and think about how conflict can affect that. I wonder what the other believers thought. Oh, James, have you seen Paul and Barnabas? I've just had a massive fall. He's gone one way, he's gone the other. I wonder what impact, what ripples that had in the rest of the community. Because conflict can bring division. The amount of times I've heard people say, oh, the church never bothered with me when I was ill. I'll never be back. Oh, the church never invited me to be part of their committee. I've had enough of it. I'm not having any of it. We see in our passage today, from the very formation of the church, there was conflict. But it didn't stop the work of the kingdom. It didn't stop that movement growing and growing and growing. Here in Bonnie Lake Church, we will face conflict. Every single church will. 
But let it not get in the way of growth. Let it not get in the way of building God's kingdom. When the General Assembly had its constant and endless debates on sexuality, I remember watching it on the telly. And one minister got up and said, the truth is, half of us think this, and half of us think that. And we're never going to change each other's minds. We've thought this through, and we've come to this conclusion. We think differently on this topic. What we need to do is work out how we can keep unity, how we can share love, and how we can keep God's church moving and growing, even in the midst of our differences. Ah, punch the air moment. Ah, it was the wisest thing I'd heard. Absolutely, we will have differences. All of us gathered here have different opinions and all sorts of things. But can we love each other in those differences like we spoke about in the children's talk? The last few days, there's been some pretty unpleasant um, comments on the Bonnie Rigg Facebook forum. I'm sure many of you just um, back off of Facebook and you are right to do so. But we can see how little divisions can come in and bring deep hurt. Even just watching the news last night and seeing the scenes from Glasgow, first parts of Scotland that beginning to get impacted by some of the riots that have been taking place down in England. It is so important as God's church. We are able to show what it looks like to have different ideas, but to be able to live in harmony. Can the church blaze a way that is different, that is an example to society? We will always have areas of conflict, but it's so important we don't allow for that to have roots of bitterness and that we can, like we sang, love each other through it. Let's pray. Father, thanks so much for your word, absolutely full of insight for us to learn from. Father, each one of us will have dealt with conflict over the years, whether it's using someone's mug in the office or whether it's a painful family situation that has been uh, still unresolved. Father, I pray that you would give each one of us a softness of heart, an openness to you, and a sense of truly being able to love one another as you have loved us. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's continue in our worship as we sing our next song together. Blessed be your name.
It's been a busy weekend for me. May and I, May's our press betrayal. Did I know where were we yesterday? We were at the press betray. The huge press betray of Lothian and Borders. Really helpfully, Meats and Dalkeith. <laughs> it was good. So we got to um, not travel too far um, in order to be part of the press betray meeting. And just as we prayed last week for God's international church, um, this week we want to pray for God's local church. As we heard of all the different activities going on, different groups such as Safe Families and Christian Aid brought some workshops for us. And then it got down to the business, the decision making, the deliverances. It's really lovely to welcome Ruth here today, who um, lots of you may know as you did your training here. How long ago? James, 20 years ago, and you're back. <laughs> Yay! And I can't say, but I'm sure they would echo back, you haven't changed a bit either. <laughs> so lovely to have you with us, Ruth. Thanks so much for joining us. And it's good to pray for the local church and to pray for those who minister in them. Ministers, as I'm sure you know, are being stretched and pulled in the increase of pressure of having to do um, shared congregations and unions and all the challenges while Getting out in the community and building God's church is, um, is a lot of pressure on those around us. But we are so thrilled that we get to pray because it's prayer that makes a difference. Not all our efforts, not all our clubs, not all our organizations, but prayer is at the heart of God's kingdom moving. So let's pray together. God, your name is holy. God, your name is blessed, and we bring you our honor, and we bring you our praise. God, we thank you that you are at work, that as we read of that church back at Acts, forming and growing, wrestling through theologies and decisions around what they believe, Father, thank you that that continues and that never, ever stops. You are always at work. You are always on the move. God, as we remembered last week, your persecuted church, we remember today those who are persecuted for following you, and we pray blessing upon them. We may not face persecution here in our nation, but we do experience pressures and demands. We do experience conflict and difficulties. And so we pray for your church. We pray for this presbytery of Lothian and Borders and the rich variety of busy congregations, of close, tight-knit, rural congregations. We pray for all those who don't have a minister and are struggling to keep things going. We pray for your Holy Spirit to enable Kirk Sessions to move forward. We pray for those who are experiences, experiencing unions. And we pray that there would be a sense of you uniting. Your Spirit weaving together. Father, we thank you for ministers called and trained to bring your kingdom into communities. But God, we know that they can't do it without the help of congregations, without the help of endless volunteers. So as we pray for ministers, we pray too for session clerks, for treasurers, for Kirk Sessions and all the elders that sit on them for all those who volunteer their time and energy, for those involved with the risk assessments and safeguarding, all the different aspects of keeping churches growing and safe. We pray for your blessing. Father, we thank you for Lorna, the moderator of our presbytery. We pray blessing on her. 
as she continues in the demands of ministry serving her congregations. Also busy serving the needs of the community in Toasty Tuesday and other events, as well as taking funerals and visiting the sick. God, would you draw close to her? Would you bless her? Would she know your joy as her strength? Father, we thank you too for the work of YF, keeping an active youth group in Bonnie Rig through the years, through all of the changes. Father, we thank you for that group that's meeting tonight. We pray for the leaders, for Ali, for Josh, for Grace. We pray that they would know your leading and your guiding. And we pray for each one of the young people that go along in a church, in a community where um, spirituality is maybe neglected, where it's not cool to talk about God. We thank you for this group of people, united only by their connection with faith in all the different stages that they're at. We pray that each one would know your blessing. Father, for each one of us gathered here and online and all of the things that we are facing, whether it's relentless activities or whether it's crippling loneliness, we thank you that you know each one of our needs. As we take time in our service to bring to you the needs of others, each one of us will have our others, those in our life that we know are struggling. In the quiet, we bring them into your presence. Father, thanks for the gift of prayer. Father, thanks for the power of prayer. We bring all of these to you. In Jesus' powerful name, amen. Let's finish our service together with our final hymn, The Cornerstone.
Let's say the great blessing together. May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all now and forevermore. Amen.